Today we're going to answer everybody's favorite question, which is how much time does it really take to master a guitar? And at the risk of alienating a lot of my subscribers, I'll just say this. If you are seriously pondering this question to the point where you're actually like going out and asking people, searching for the answer, or if you believe in the so-called 10,000 hour rule that allegedly says that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to reach a high level of mastery in any field, then you're doing it wrong. First of all, this 10,000 hour rule is a complete joke and it falls apart the moment you apply even a little bit of common sense to it. For example, 10,000 hours starting from what point in time and how many of those hours have you already practiced? Which hours even count and which hours don't count? Like if you played a gig, does that count towards the 10,000 hours or not? And what if you got some bad habits to undo? Does that mean you now have to squeeze in two or 300 more extra hours to make up for the lost time you spend on doing bad habits? And does everybody even define mastery the same way? Oh, and by the way, is it really 10,000 hours exactly like on the nose or is it more like 9,862 hours rounded up? Okay, okay, calm down. Of course I'm being facetious here. I realize that this is not exact science. It's just a simple rule of thumb to let people know that it takes a lot of freaking hours to get good at guitar. But that's exactly my point. It's such a simple and sticky idea. It's so easy to remember this 10,000 hour number that pretty soon people start treating it, talking about it, and thinking about it as if it's the truth. And soon it becomes just like pig slanting, I mean, just like any other kind of guitar playing dogma that you see thrown around online. I've seen some people get so freaking militant about it, they actually count every single hour they practice. They keep track of every single minute to see how quickly they can hit the 10,000 hour mark. Stop. Doing that. And I don't just mean stop counting the hours you practice, I mean stop even worrying about how long getting good at guitar is supposed to take. That's like worrying about how long it takes to grow up. You can't even define what growing up is, much less how long it's supposed to take. And one glaring problem with this 10,000 hour rule is that it assumes that everybody's one hour of practice is exactly the same. Well, obviously it's not. My one hour of practice is not the same as your one hour of practice, not the same as John Petrucci's, Paul Gilbert's, Ingves, or whoever. And no guitar teacher on the planet is so good that they can look at you or even listen to you play and tell you, oh, you've got this many hours left before you're a master. But by far the biggest problem I have with this 10,000 hour rule or even just asking the question of how long it's supposed to take to get good at guitar is that your frame of reference now becomes external instead of internal. What I mean by that is it's so easy to stop focusing on the process of practicing guitar in the best way possible and squeezing maximum amount of results per minute out of every time you spend with your guitar and simply passively coast and just wait for that amount of time to go by before you can call yourself a master. Guys, hopefully I don't have to tell you that this is not how practicing works. This is a great example of why I'm often against setting specific outcome-based goals with strict deadlines. Because you often limit yourself and sometimes can even make reaching your goals take much longer since you have no way to really objectively know how long reaching any goal is supposed to take. So let's say you randomly decided it should take you 10,000 hours or plug whatever number you want in the blank there to reach your goal. But what if you could have reached that goal in 9,000 or 8,000 hours if you simply focused on the process instead of the outcome? If you focused on squeezing the maximum amount of progress and efficiency out of every minute you spend with your guitar? Well, then you just wasted one or 2,000 hours getting to your goal. That's not very smart, is it? On the flip side though, sometimes it simply takes more time than you plan to reach a goal. Sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes you shift goals and come back to a goal. Sometimes you get injured. Sometimes life gets in the way. For whatever reason, it simply takes more time than you plan. But by boxing yourself in with some arbitrary deadline, all you do is just needlessly make yourself frustrated and more likely to beat yourself up instead of enjoying the process and enjoying the journey of becoming the guitar player you want to be. And speaking of enjoying your practicing, if you have to ask too many of these how long it's supposed to take to get good at guitar type questions, it probably means you're not enjoying practicing very much, which is in itself a huge problem. Think of anything you really enjoy doing outside of guitar, whether it's watching your favorite Netflix series or playing video games or whatever. Do you ever ask yourself questions like, how many more episodes are there of the show? Or how long is it supposed to take me to beat this video game to get to the final boss level or whatever? You probably never ask these questions because you're so into the process. You're so present in the moment, you're enjoying every second of it, you're actually hoping it takes longer for it to finish. Well, practicing guitar, when you do it the right way, is supposed to feel a lot like that. Of course, it's not as mindless as just watching your favorite Netflix series. Yes, there is some thought involved. You have to pay attention and you have to solve problems, but that process should feel enjoyable because every time you solve a problem or develop a skill, you level up your playing, and that 
means you can now play better with more accuracy, more speed, with less effort, with more consistency, and all of that, that whole process should feel enjoyable. So instead of asking how long is it supposed to take me to get to the sucky part of practicing that I don't want to do so I can get to what I really want to do, which is just play guitar really well, a better question to ask is how do I make practicing guitar more enjoyable and more effective so I enjoy doing it more and I look forward to doing it more. And one way to do that is to have an arsenal of guitar practice and technique, problem solving tools on your tool belt that help you solve various guitar playing problems in less time. And I have a video on my channel that shows you how to do that. It's called 10 Amazing Guitar Technique Life Hacks. You can check it out right here and it shows you 10 simple things you can implement on your technique that often take no practice at all or sometimes just a little bit of practice, but they help you see some pretty noticeable gains in how easy guitar playing feels very quickly. So check that video out and apply these hacks into your practicing and techniques starting today. Also, if you want some more help with building your guitar speed but you hate practicing slowly, hit the link in the description of this video or go to the page that's on the screen right now. I'm going to show you a free one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is is a new way to build guitar speed that does not require you to start slow and gradually build speed in small increments because let's face it, that's a pretty boring way to practice and more importantly doesn't work nearly as well as most people tell you that it does. If you want to know a new way to build speed, go to the page on the screen right now, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. And if you like this video, hit the like button so YouTube knows you enjoyed it and it'll spread it out to other guitar players like you and they'll benefit from it the same way you did. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.